Hello everyone and welcome to a recreation of STS-93, the space shuttle mission that carried the Chandra Space Telescope to orbit in Kerbal Space Program using Realism Overhaul. So here I have modeled the Chandra Space Telescope as featured in a previous video and linked in the previous video for those who want to use this mod for Kerbal Space Program as well. Uh, behind here is the inertial upper stage by Raider Nick from Raider Nick's US Rockets Pack and the space shuttle itself is the Giulio Dondi version of the space shuttle and I'm going to be using the Giulio Dondi KOS scripts to run the space shuttle for launch and landing. Uh, for the first time as a recreation, I've done many videos on it before, but this is the first time I'm doing a recreation with the particular set of scripts. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, before I continue, uh, thanks to Darag Gordon 8231 on YouTube for informing me about what was causing my problems with the Chandra Space Telescope. What was causing the problems was a pair of little covers that are on here. Uh, this pair, the, that one and that one. I had removed the shrouds of the RCS boards, but I had not removed this pair. And that's because I didn't like the look of it underneath. So uh, aesthetically, I wanted to keep those, but it turns out those were falling off and hitting the space telescope somehow. Uh, uh, comments on the colliders on the space shuttle, by the way. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's a little bit suspicious. But anyway, so that was happening, and thank you for pointing that out. Uh, so now we don't have those covers on, and we're just going to have to deal with that. So that will hopefully allow us to carry the space, shuttle, uh, carry the space telescope safely to orbit. And while we do, I will talk about a few other aspects of this mission. So closing this up, let's take it outside. All right, so one minor discrepancy from the real mission that I'll confess to is that we're launching from pad 39A instead of launch complex 39B, which is in the background there. And that's because I have the shuttle structure on 39A. So really they launched on 39B. Uh, the reason I've decided to recreate this particular mission is there are lots of fascinating aspects to it. One, it is the largest uh, payload that the shuttle ever carried, the heaviest. Uh, the total is rated at 22.78 tons, uh, though some of it is like the structure to tilt the IUS up. Because when you sum the Chandra Space Telescope and the IUS, uh, it doesn't get to 22 tons like that, but I think it, uh, the Thing that they use to tilt up the IUS and which is currently being simulated by an infernal robotics hinge in Kerbal Space Program that probably has some extra weight there too. One of the interesting aspects to having such a large payload is that when you take a look at the bay it stretches from the very front to the very back uh, with the hinge. Our hinge doesn't quite meet the back but this probably did pretty close. And as a result, Columbia was the only shuttle that could carry it because the others had a docking structure and an airlock in the front uh, inside the cargo bay, an external airlock. And that was to uh, be able to dock with Mir and then later the International Space Station. Well, in this case, not later. Uh, this mission launched in 1999, so right about when the International Space Station was starting construction. Uh, the launch was on July 23rd, and the landing date was on July 28th, and so I'm doing it just after the 25th anniversary of this launch. That's another reason I decided to do it. And there's also been talk about uh, sort of cutting the life of the Chandra X-ray Space Telescope short recently at its 25th anniversary. Uh, because of funding issues, so that's yet another reason. Uh, one other special thing about this mission was it was the first time that the shuttle was commanded by a woman, Eileen Collins. It was her third space flight. Other people on board were Jeffrey Ashby, he was the pilot. Catherine Coleman was Mission Specialist 1. Stephen A. Hawley was Mission Speci Specialist 2. And Michelle uh, Tognini was Mission Specialist 3, and uh, Tognini was from France. So, yes, that was the crew of five. Uh, we do not have their names uh, as Kerbals down here. But yet another reason was that the launch was very particular, peculiar, uh, troubled. The trouble, it was a very troubled launch for STS-93. So that's another reason to feature it. And as a result, I'm going to play the Mission Control audio for the launch, 
and you will hear sort of, I mean, very calm voices, but otherwise talking about potentially chaotic things. Uh, because this, this had the potential to be an abort scenario, but didn't end up being an abort scenario. It ended up alright. Now, the source for this audio, well, originally it was posted to nasaspaceflight.com's L2 section, but at the request of Wayne Hale, one of the mission controllers for the shuttle, though not for this particular mission, he uh, had posted a blog entry on his blog, and I'll post that as well because it's a much better explanation of what goes on during launch than I'm going to give you. So he posted a blog entry on October 26th, 2014, and knowing that this audio uh, existed, I requested that it be posted to YouTube, and so I'm going to also link the original video that it was posted to on October 27th, and that's on a channel of only 25 subscribers, but this particular video got 12,000 views, so uh, yes, it's a popular one. Uh, subsequently, this video, the information and audio was posted to nasaspacelight.com's own channel in 2019, and it's also been posted by other people, but I'm going to post what I think is the oldest version on YouTube. So that'll be in the video description. So it'll be Wayne Hill's blog entry explaining everything and also the Ascent audio. Now, uh, just uh, another note, uh, the launch that we're going to do, I'm going to try to start it off at the same time as the audio. However, you'll notice that we don't get to booster separation at the same time. The reason for that is because the game has physics lag. And so, when, when we hit booster separation, it'll be later than when they hit booster separation, so sorry about that. But I, I want to do this dynamically uh, on the fly, so we'll listen to the audio as we're launching this uh, just for fun. And then I'll continue with the mission because we also have the space, uh, space telescope to deal with and also the landing of the shuttle. So, here we go. Ignition. Ignition. Traveling up. 300 meters. Lift off confirmed. Stage. Copy lift off. Call up 3104. Right, clock control. Spot CCU A on the center. Right, 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 AC bus sensors off. AC Pretty bus sensors the other off. Columbia, Houston, we'd like AC bus sensors off. Eagle yeah, flight. The fuel cell we're looking. Look like a transient on uh, AC-1. Tell them that. Transient on AC-1. Bus it, looks healthy at the time. Right. Roger that, Columbia. Looks like we had a transient on AC-1. Do 87667. Uh, Which flight? Give me what we lost on the controllers. We lost a DCU-A on the center and DCU-B on the right. Critical AC-2 on the center and AC-3 on the right. Fire line 367. In the bucket. Main engine concurs and copies with your call. Watching for GPC one yeah, three. Critical AC two. And AC three flying. Copy. And AC three is your call. We are throttling up. AC two on the center engine. AC three on the three right. Three at one hundred and four. Run up three to one four. On the center and DCUB on the right. There, go with throttle up. Copy that. And Columbia Houston, you are go with throttle up. We did it. Columbia, we did get MTF on both engines. Yeah, I concur. Who's going to pass? Go ahead, Yeah, right, uh, Eagle Point. Point. pressure, Bravo. Right on the, uh, right Any idea what trips on AC-1? Uh, uh sir, looks like Raddy Data. Well, the fuel cell started in, in there. Yeah, the fuel cell PA, is that also the AC bus? That's just when the, uh, yes sir, when it passed. Yeah. It just did a self-test. Copy that. Who's the main engine? Nope. Yeah, we see higher fuel and oxidizer attempts on the right engine. Doesn't look like a performance case right now, but I'm verifying. Copy. Dim the trend on AC-1 right now, it's flyline, I mean, it looks good on all the inverter. Okay, so as they calm down a bit... Three look healthy at this time. Okay, that should be set. I'll give the account from uh, Wikipedia here. As the booster set. Performance nominal. Copy nominal. Columbia Houston, performance nominal. Performance is nominal, a lot of other things were nominal. So... During the main engine ignition sequence, a gold pin used to plug an oxidizer post in the shuttle's number three right engine came loose and was violently ejected, striking the engine's nozzle, engine nozzle's interior surface, tearing open three cooling tubes containing hydrogen. 
Uh, these resulted in a leak upstream of the main combustion chamber. And then that was read as a leak uh, by the right engine's controller, uh, but it did not violate any launch commit criteria and liftoff proceeded normally. normally. Uh, five seconds after liftoff, an electrical short disabled the center engine's primary digital control unit, DCUA, and the right engine's backup unit, DCUB. The center and right engines continue to operate on the remaining DCs for the rest of the power flight over because redundancy. Redundancy is good. Uh, yeah. For more details, I'll leave it to Wayne Hill's blog. The fuel temps and HBOT temps and OPOE is open. The fuel discharge pressure is slow, but we're not meeting all cues. We're not meeting the H-pot. Yeah, we're not temp temp we're only halfway the towards the turbine temp on the H-pot then. I concur. So they're detecting negative issues return. other than the electrical issues due to, to that gold pin. Columbia, negative return. And the OPOB is not moved near enough. I concur. We took a thrust update of plus six. Plus six, copy that. Booster, how's your engine looking? Engine's looking good, flight. Uh, the right engine looks like the tags are off on the right. Uh, doesn't line up with anything. Copy. You lose most of your data on the center? Yeah, the center engine lost primary data due to the DCUA channel power fail. Okay. Good way down, down Copy, good fist. John, the center went down, he'd expect to find the data path, is that correct? Uh, negative flight. We still have secondary data. We okay. still have the PC sensors, the engine status worth dead. And main engine concurs. The flight director, yeah, the very calm engine, flight director in this case, was John no. Shannon. GPC-1, I'm sorry, GPC-2, and also GPC-3. I'll give us a command pass. GPC-3 would be command pass. Command and data. data. Right. That's correct. They're going through all the abort stuff now, saying that they can go to ATO Roger that. You are single engine ops three. Single engine ops three. And FPS continues look good. Good helium. Good knowledge. Center right open. Left flight one. Copy that. Banjul is on board flight. Copy Banjul. So one reason to watch the original video that I'll be posting in the video description is to see who's saying what. I deliberately did not add that to this video so that you can watch the original video that was posted. Fight. Fallen. Grand roll and heads up. Fight. Copy. And we are rolling to heads up. Actually, we're on time, so that's good. I thought there would be much more lag. Inside two minutes, let's get an underspeed. Copy. Okay, it's Mr. Morgan for an underspeed. Okay, it's Mr. Morgan for an underspeed. No underspeed, sir. thank you. Copy, no underspeed. Copy, none. And we're going to watch the throttling on the center on the GH2LP, GO2LP. I concur. And the PC average we got. And we got the PC average coming down to us, right? Just lost a primary in the center. Booster flight. Go flying. Single engine press 104. Columbia Copy. Houston. Single, single engine press. press 104. Columbia, single engine press 104. John coming up on a minute to Miko here. Any uh, shutdown required? No, I think sounds required. We'll watch throttling on the center with with the uh, secondary data that we have. So they're Call. wondering whether they have to well, shut down the uh, engine early, I guess. Columbia Houston approaching Miko. Nominal shutdown plan, no action required. Heading over to yours. Stick it up. 3D throttle. Or just manually shut them down, just in case the controllers are messed up. Good command, no shutdown required. Copy that. Flight booster 3D throttling on three. Copy that. 
or maybe because they have to throttle down at this point if they're not throttling down properly they need Locked to shut them down MPS is go for guided Miko engines go Er, we go Five. 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 FYTC, we're not copying downlink on UHF to Bermuda. Copy. Arm, arm. Fine count. Fine count. Miko, Miko confirmed. Not the early to Miko compared to Copy. us here. That's where we're at, so yeah, we're a little late. Coming to Houston, we see a 15 foot per second under speed, Ohms 1, not required. And we are not going to be doing Ohms 1 either. Dump on three. Okay, folks, all the post ohms one steps. And this copies. Page three dash two. Booster, did you see the flash on a low level sensor? Yeah, yeah, we, saw yeah we saw the lock level sensors, all four of them go dry right at Miko and with the underspeed there, it looked like it was probably a lock level cutoff. Yikes. You bet. Incur. We don't need any more of these. <laughs> And that's the famous line, we don't need any more of these, uh, because it was such a tense launch. Uh, and that's also what Wayne Hale's blog entry is titled, along with saying that it's STS-93. So, with that being the launch, uh, we now have the actual mission. So, here we are at uh, a little bit high, 289, I said to 280, so we need to... Well, well, we'll just keep it like that. That's probably close enough. After all, the space telescope is going much, much higher than that. So we are going to go up to apoapsis and then get to 260 on the periapsis and then proceed. Now, I've not been particular about the launch date since this was a very main mission. Uh, the mission duration was not that long, it was 4 days, 22 hours altogether. Okay, conducting the OMS burn. The orbit they're getting into, uh, 280 by 260, is a one and a half hour orbit. It's literally the standard orbit that I always use for returns of the space shuttle. Uh, so that's going to be convenient, that was convenient for them, for the same reason it's convenient for me. Now. One other thing was that they launched at nighttime, so apologies for that. It was a nighttime launch, but if I did that, you wouldn't be able to see anything. So, yeah. <laughs> we did not launch at night. Okay, unlocking. And the position for release is 50 degrees. I'm not sh too sure whether they would do it or not, but it's possible for the shuttle to tilt down so that when they release the payload, it's pointing prograde. Oh, I don't know if they did it like this, but they certainly could. Alright, I think we're a go for deployment. So... That is the correct decoupler. Off it goes. And then avoidance. And we are going to just boost up right here. I, again, I don't know exactly where they set their periapsis to for the Chandra X-ray Space Telescope. So once we do the initial boost, we'll go up to our apoapsis. And then we have another boost there using the second stage of the inertial upper stage. And that will get us ultimately to an orbit that is... 14,300 kilometers on the perigee side and then 134,000 kilometers on the apogee side at 76.7 .7 degrees is our goal. Uh, I think we'll be satisfied with roughly that, <laughs> okay? So but I'll, but I'll try my best. Okay, but these are solid rocket motors. Uh, they do have gimbling, but I can't turn them off. So anyway, Prograde. I'm reasonably certain that 
these are both just straight prograde burns. Sometimes with SRBs, they'll actually add another radial in in order to um, make sure it hits a particular orbit. But I think uh, the goal for the X-ray space telescope was just to get really high up. And we will see that hopefully. All right. So I'm going to just manually ignite this like this. I don't know if it's going to like that, but up we go. So we're looking for a 14,300 kilometer apoapsis with this. The payload mass is over 5 tons. It's 5.6. That's the space telescope itself. The rest of the payload mass in the shuttle was the inertial upper stage. These nozzles do gimbal. They're capable of gimbling. Uh, but it also has RCS on the second stage. Another thing they possibly could have done was actually tilt this so that the periapsis would be suborbital. We're going to get a little bit extra here. To the tune of about 200 meters per second extra. And maybe if they tilted it a little bit radial, they could have gotten this into the atmosphere. So I think maybe that was the thing that they did to dispose of it, but I'm not sure. But we ended up at 18,000 instead of 14,000. And that might be a thing that they would have thought about. Okay, separating. Okay. And then we'll head on up with this portion. But also have an inclination of 70 something. So I don't think that's the right delta V. <laughs> so, um, hmm. Because our end mass is definitely not 0.3. Our mass right now is not 3 tons either. It's 8. So we can't trust that. I don't know what we can trust as far as a reference for our, our delta V. But with about 3 tons of fuel, I'd be thinking like it only has 2,000 meters per second or so. Okay, let me just activate it like this. It does have an extendable nozzle. Oh yeah, no. <laughs> this is not getting high enough. Really? 76.7 70, degree inclination? I'm going to have to review the Chandra X-ray Space Telescope trajectory to figure out how the heck they got it to the orbit that it's currently in. Now it does have some internal fuel. As we separate that bit off. But that's not much. It's got 500 and yeah 552 right now okay well you know what i'm gonna hardly try it one more time i'm gonna launch it but not with the audio of the anomalies and i'm gonna just come back and we'll pick it up from where the first stage separates and i'm not gonna do any inclination burn i'm gonna see if i can get it to a better orbit to be fair to wiki um assuming that's necessary it's possible that they launched it to 28 degrees and then it's all sorts of n-body physics that got the space telescope to 76 degrees even without like explicitly flying by the moon or something uh, that over time over 25 years it could end up at 76.7 degrees for all I know so yeah that, that's that's possible All right, I'm also going to try to do the first stage burn so that it ends up deorbiting the first stage of the IUS, but I'm not too sure that's going to work out. Uh, here we go. Now that means that the space telescope is also left suborbital for some of it. I don't know if they would have liked doing that or not, but I mean, it's not like something could have solved the problem if the second stage of IUS failed or anything, so. Okay, a little bit low on the apoapsis, but slightly in the atmosphere on the periapsis, so maybe that would been good. Okay. Off we go. Let's see if we can do this. Alright. Let's see. Activate. Well, I thought this would be enough to boost it higher up, but we're not quite getting there. 
Let's see. Let's see if the little engines here are good enough. Well, there is one other possibility, and that's that both stages of the IUS were lit at periapsis, and then it used its own fuel to boost its periapsis at apoapsis, but I still don't think it would have enough fuel for that. But that's possible. Okay, well, I'm inclined to think that this is not getting very high up, even though we're not increasing the inclination. So, I'll just stop it right there. I'll, I'm clearly missing something on that. But, yeah. I've got it higher up, but not where it was supposed to go. I'll have to review exactly how it got where it was supposed to go, and possibly lighting both uh, stages of the IUS at periapsis would have gotten us at least the target apoapsis, and then at apoapsis we could use this engine to boost up, but or these engines to boost up. But for now, I'm going to try and bring the shuttle back down. All right, according to the stated mission duration, this is the orbit that I should be coming down on. And so, well, let's kill rotation there. And we need to run the script to plan our descent. But first, I'm going to create a maneuver. Let's say around here. And we'll give it a sort of normal amount of retro burn and then run ps3 underscore d orbit okay we are going for the ksc that is correct we gotta try and hit the maneuver node to make everything green okay for now it says all that is green so we're going to take this maneuver and the maneuver is to a periapsis of 33.5 kilometers. So that part I'll be making sure to do. We may have too much fuel after this. And if that's true, I'll dump some. The shuttle didn't really have a whole lot to do in terms of in-flight maneuvers during this mission, but I don't want to leave everyone with the idea that all they did was deploy the space telescope and do nothing else. They had a whole bunch of other stuff. There's a cell culture module, shuttle amateur radio experiment, earth cam payload that conducted earth observations using the electronic still camera, Installed in the overhead starboard window, plant growth investigations, commercial generic bioprocessing apparatus, microelectrical mechanical system payload examined the performance under launch, uh, microgravity and reentry conditions of a suite of MEMS devices. So, yeah. And then there was biological research in canisters. And let me get the Mon 3 and NM8 and MMH to lower levels. Okay, that should be safe. Delta V wise, that's still 200, so more than enough for re entry. Okay. And again, they would have been coming down at night. We we're going to be coming down in daylight because I preferred to actually see things. So we are just approaching the Terminator there. A mild, very mild correction will be necessary in terms of cross range. And OPS3, the program for re-entry, can only be started at 122 kilometers. Okay, off of Smart ASS and activation. All right, and runway 33 is the one they landed on. I'm going to auto everything else. I don't know what's up with raster prop monitor and the displays. I swear there was a version of the shuttle cockpit that had the displays working, but we don't have the displays working. Of course, it'd be even fancier if we had these things, this HUD and this entry guidance on these displays, but that's probably... Well, but, but then KOS... There is a KOS plugin for raster prop monitor, but yeah, that's... Might be asking for too much there.
But yeah, at least I would have liked to have something on those displays. Or have rest prop monitor stuff, but I don't know what's happened to that. I've had a version of the shuttle that had that stuff, but apparently not this one. I do have rest prop monitor installed. But there has always been some issues with rest prop monitor from version to version. Okay, we have some plasma effects. You're at 93 kilometers. We're still in pre-entry mode. We've got a roll, a serious roll. Okay, we are through the thick of it, and we are approaching Florida with no apparent problems. It is turning north as it is currently a little bit south. Okay, probably doing a final roll reversal here. Tampa Bay to our right, and Cape Canaveral right there. Alright, we are flying overhead of the runway now. Below Mach 2. So the real mission ended after 4 days, 22 hours, 49 minutes and 34 seconds. We'll be a, potentially a little bit early. We're at Four, four days, 22 hours, 38 minutes and 40 seconds right now. So basically got 11 minutes to land here. Maybe it'll take that long, I don't know. But we're close. At least this part we're close on. And getting ready to turn. And turning. All right, and turning towards the runway. Okay, lined up and coming in. And pulling up. Landing gear down. And it sort of takes its time at this point. And touchdown. Okay. Flying brakes. All right, mission complete. A few minutes early, but there you have it. STS-93. With that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.